Now, the moment of the day where I get to share the good stuff that's going on out there to give you that feel-good Friday feeling just in time for the weekend. And I start with some good news for the Liverpool-based company Marine Specialised Technology. Now, they've just been awarded a £36 million contract to deliver 18 new police patrol craft for the MOD and the Gibraltar Defence Police Forces. This is what they're going to look like. Uh, the five-year contract will deliver 16 of these patrol craft to the MOD police and two craft to the GDP, replacing those currently in use. The contract will sustain 50 jobs at the company, which is on the River Mersey, and it will create a further 15 jobs across the northwest of England. These 15-metre craft can carry three people. They're going to be fitted with a CCTV surveillance system, two marine jet power water jets, and reinforced with bulletproof protection against incoming fire. So good news across the board there. Now, just take a look at this beauty. It's a diamond. It's just been unearthed in Botswana, and it's thought to be the third largest in the world. It's just gone on show. Here it is in the hands of the Botswana president, Maguizi Masisi. Now, the stone weighs around 1,098 carats and was discovered about two weeks ago by the diamond firm Devswana Diamond Company. It's not known yet how much this diamond is worth, but just as a rough guide, the second largest diamond, that's the Lesse de la Rodna, which weighed 1,109 carats, well, that sold for £40 million, and that was four years ago. So this, this will be worth a bit of money. Well, let's hope, actually, as it's found in Botswana, that some of that money, if it, you know, if it gets sold, goes back into um, Botswana and the people of Botswana. Because they could probably do with some of it. They could. Yeah. Thank you. Now, a widower who tried to dodge a stipulation in his wife's will that he must not remarry after her death, he's just lost the inheritance that she left him. The man, who's named only as Constantino, had insisted that his long-term relationship with a woman he claimed was his cousin did not constitute marriage. Now, the provincial court in Galicia, this is a picture of it, uh, they disagreed. They decided that Constantino had lived with that other woman for nearly three decades in a relationship comparable, it said, to a marriage. The legal battle dated back to a time in Spain when it was not uncommon for people to leave their wealth to their spouses on condition that they did not remarry. Well, Constantino's wife died in 1996, but had made her will in 1975. The court heard that Constantino had started an affair with the other woman in the late 1980s, and the relationship lasted until her death in 2016. Witnesses presented by the man, all family members or friends, acknowledged that he had spent long periods at the woman's house, but stated that it was only due to family affection, as they were cousins. The court didn't believe him. A bit gnarly, that story, actually, isn't it? The gnarly. cousin situation, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't. But it wasn't his cousin. Oh, so he was just saying it was... Oh, the whole point was... It's a Friday. Was... It's the a Friday. The whole point was, was that it... Right. OK, sorry. But I, I quite like the idea of sort of, you know, leaving in your will conditions. You know, if you do these things, you get the inheritance. If you don't, you don't get it. I think it was her sister who decided to, to pull the uh, plan. Anyway, mm. we move on. Now, I want to thank the Scottish Sun for this story. It's great. Two twins who were born in England are set to support opposite sides in that crunch England-Scotland Scotland Euros match shortly. Four-year-old Briar Rose Wright and her identical sister Aurora, they've got a Scottish mum, Karen, and an English dad, Connor. They decided to have some fun by pitting the twins against each other. Briar Rose is set to support the Tartan Army along with her mum, while Aurora will be backing Gareth Southgate's men along with her dad. Briar Rose's favourite colour is blue, so she went with Scotland. Aurora's favourite colour is pink, so she went close. Red. England. Karen is hoping her beloved Scotland will be able to triumph by pulling off a huge upset and win at Wembley, but admitted she's fearing the worst. Meanwhile, Connor is confident England will pick up the three points. He believes they'll secure a 2-0 victory. I'm not sure about the, the idea of pitting two twins against each other at this early stage. I, how... Well, Ooh, maybe, yeah. maybe the childhood early years psychologist will Well, exactly. Able to we'll probably say not say such a great plan. I don't yeah. know. Mm. I don't like their names, though. Beautiful names. Briar Rose and Aurora. Mm. Like Sleeping Beauty inspired. I think they're lovely names. Thank you. Oh, you're on a roll tonight, aren't you? <laughs> 
Now, uh, a quick mention, uh, I just want to mention the pupils of Upton House School in Windsor because they're releasing a song next Tuesday to raise money for the children of frontline workers who've been significantly affected by their parents' dedication to the NHS during the pandemic. The song's called A Brand New Start. It's been written by the school's head of music with contributions from children all aged from 2 to 11. And a number of charities will also benefit. I have no doubt that come next Tuesday that uh, song will be featuring on a number of news outlets, but I just thought I'd mention it today. Now, the first trials have been held for the world's first flying racing car. This is going to appeal to you. The Air Speeder, it's remotely controlled. It's capable of doing 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 2.8 seconds. Up to four teams will take part in the races. Now, they're called octocopters. And the first flights took place at an undisclosed test location in the deserts of South Australia under the observation of the country's Civil Aviation Safety Authority. And now they've had a successful trial. It means uncrewed electric flying car Grand Prix will take place at three international locations later this year. That's quite cool. That is quite You're cool. You're into Formula One. I love Formula One, but they're uncrewed. So does that mean they're, they're basically... Control. Is it just another word for a drone, really? Is it drone racing? No, no, they're quite big. They are big? They're big. I mean, I'd definitely turn out to watch that. I just love anything that flies. That thing, the, the, the gadgety thing, that thing looks at the octocopter. Octocopter. Looks a bit like the Osprey, which is one of my favourite military aircraft. Oh. It's the one that's the aeroplane with the... Yeah, with the four... With the yeah, rotary this has eight, blades. Eight, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Octo, you see, yeah. 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 That's cool. I like that. Right. Now, you're into your cars. Look at this. Because Lego has revealed its latest life-size creation, a 400,000-piece Lamborghini. Let me show you the pictures. It took 8,660 hours to develop and construct. Its dimensions are identical to that of the real-life car. Lego says it's the first time a hexagonal shape has been used to form the outer shell of a build. Apparently, that's quite something. Anyway, the, the real-life Cyan is Lamborghini's first production hybrid. It comes with a naturally aspirated 6.5-litre V12. This isn't one of those. It's not cheap, the Lego version, but if you want the real one, it'll cost you just short of three million pounds. So this is ah. probably the, this is the closest I'm going to get. Lego's having a big resurgence, actually, with the adult population. My brother's really into it. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier and, and mobile phones and is that depriving youngsters of, of, mm. of playthings. Lego doing real well. Yeah. Things like Scale X Trick are coming back, Hornby trains. But you can They're get very was... complex Lego now, can't you? To sort of build um, things like a, a Lamborghini. A, a, palace, well, a Lamborghini, a Lamborghini Palace yeah. of Westminster. And it's um, yeah, really popular amongst adults now. Mm. Now, uh, you might have a view on this, because the Scout Association has launched a new badge to help more than 200,000 boys and girls build important money skills for the future. The Money Skills Activity Badge has been developed with HSBC, and it'll be available for Beaver and Cub Scouts aged 6 to 10 to earn. It comes after a survey for Census-wide suggested more than half of children aged 6 to 10 said they don't understand money. Well, the new badge was developed after speaking to young people, parents, and the financial education charity young money. I think this is great. This is a good idea. I think it's a really good idea and I've always wondered why kids at school aren't taught basic things like budgeting. They're not really taught much you about, you know, anything like mortgages, you know, about the adult Oh, world. I was about to say, exactly right. I left school with nobody having told me how a mortgage works, yeah. how, how, what APR, all these Any things. Any of those things, yeah. And I think that it's important that um, kids, that you're never too young to learn how to budget and things like that. I think it's a really good idea. No, for the Scouts, that's... That's good news. Well done to them. Now, an Arctic walrus, thought to be the popular Wally, has paid a visit to the Isle of Scilly. Now, this is the latest sighting of this rather special visitor last seen off the Cornish coast. Now, Dan Jarvis from the British Divers Marine Life Rescue said on Facebook, uh, this is Wally in the dark, uh, the rare visitor is the same young male that spent a number of weeks in South Wales earlier this year before passing through Cornwall and down the Bay of Biscay. His last known sighting was in Bilbao in Spain two weeks ago, and the animal's movements are being monitored by a number of conservation and welfare organisations just to keep an eye on his health. Although he seems to be coping well out of his regular habitat, he has been seen quite often, and it's hoped that he's now finally returning north and will get back to his native home in the Arctic again soon. The group and the Isles of Scilly Wildlife Trust are asking people to give Wally plenty of space, not to approach or follow him, and to respect him while he visits the island. It's thought he might be quite tired and may just need a bit of being yeah. left alone for I love a bit. the fact he went over, chilled out in Spain, came back, and Wally, if you're watching before you go home, you're more than welcome to come and join us in the GB News studios. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Okay. Good, good thought. <laughs> There's a canal, but that's, that's about it. Anyway, now, do you remember Paul the Octopus, who successfully predicted the results of Germany's seven matches at the 2010 World Cup? Do you remember? I yeah. do. Ah. You can't forget Paul the Octopus. I want you to meet Willow, the Wonder Pooch. He's tipped England's heroes to beat Scotland at Wembley shortly. Uh, the clever cockapoo barked Harry Kane and co to get a result against Croatia in their Euros opener. Now, Willow, who watched Scotland's abject 2-0 defeat to the Czech Republic, did not even pause to mull it over. Sorry about this, but this is all courtesy of the Scottish Sun. We love them. <laughs> uh, she was so certain of victory, she took hold of Scotland's Saltire flag and then pulled it to pieces, you can see there. She's got off to the best possible start, just like England, says her owner. And after watching Scotland the other day, she is in no doubt who's going to come out on top at Wembley. We'll see how she feels tomorrow. Well, yeah, I hope, as an English girl, I hope she's right. We will see. Now, a British Army veteran has completed a full marathon in his 30-foot hotel room. This was while he was under strict quarantine, raising crucial funds for military veterans who've been impacted during the pandemic. This is Ash Alexander Cooper. He's a former Gurkha officer. He travelled to Sydney in Australia to reunite with his 12-year-old daughter after more than a year apart. But due to strict coronavirus regulations, he had to complete a two-week quarantine in total isolation, confining himself to his hotel room with meals delivered to his door and unable even to open a window. Well, the veteran's been shot in both legs. He survived a roadside bomb and a helicopter crash during 22 years of service. Uh, he became one of the British Army's most experienced soldiers. And while he was in his hotel room, he ran round it, performed a full marathon. All power to him. We're hoping to speak to him at some point. Yeah, that's that quite is something. an amazing story, isn't it? What a great what story. achievement. What, yeah. what, you know, dedication. Stories like that we love. Yeah. Now, I want you to meet Harley. He's a six-year-old golden doodle, and he's Facebook's newest hero after rescuing a baby deer from drowning in a lake. The pup's owners, Ralph Dawn and his wife Pat, both military... ...the fawn back to shore. I'm not sure how the fawn got out there, but Harley didn't ask why, he just jumped in and rescued him. Sorry, we haven't got enough pictures there, but the pictures will, will warm your heart. We'll maybe show them another time. Uh, that happened in Virginia, uh, and uh, the golden doodle, uh, he's been licking the baby deer ever since. They've now become very close. I just want to show you this. <laughs> Brian Bourne wrote on Twitter, One of my mates has two tickets in a corporate box for the England-Scotland Scotland game. He paid £300 each, but didn't realise when he bought them that it was going to be the same day that his COVID-19 postponed wedding was taking place. If you're interested, he's looking for someone to take his place. It's a Cambridge registry office at 2.30 in the afternoon. The bride's name is Helen. She's 5 foot 4, about 10 stone, quite pretty, has her own income as a consultant and enjoys movies. Ryan, how dare you? But <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that is, made me laugh. It is brilliant humour. I love it. Brilliant humour.